I can see a good spark in your eyes. Uh, so, because we know that you are the future professionals. So, you know, we have a discussion, we had a good round of, um, you know, discussions, good questions for coming up from the audience. Something good to learn from the session, what we have discussed so far. Also, the, you know, so much of learned pen lights we have here. And um, they have so much of experience from the industry that I'm, I'm also relatively new, according to, you know, as per their, their experiences so far. But yes, this is our responsibility, how we have to take it forward. In the meanwhile, when I start my presentation, I think just, you know, we can quickly interact uh, and, um, and I think uh, we can start a discussion. So any of you have ever read anything about corporate governance as a part of your uh, curriculum? Students. So what, what anyone of you understands, what does it mean? I'm sure it's, 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 it's nothing new. It's nothing new. It's just about our, our mindset, what we understand. So I'm here to, to, you know, to make you understand in a very easiest way what is corporate governance, what are the different facets of it, where are we standing now, and also what do we mean by the corporate social responsibilities. Because it's not just about the companies, it's all about we as well. What we do towards the organization and what we do towards the society. That is important. Let's have a quick round. Okay. So the corporate governance, it is basically a relationship between the stakeholders, the management of a company, and the different shareholders of a company. They take the responsibility and they design their rules and policies for the betterment of a company. It's usually done at the board meetings at the, at the year start, and they rule out the policies and the regulations for the year ahead. But eventually I understand that it is, corporate governance is nothing but a step towards strengthening of the organization to face the coming challenges. We have a lot of challenges coming in India. Every day we have a new challenge. And that's the way, and that's for what we are here for. Let me quickly take you to what, what does it mean. So here's a need of corporate governance. I think there's some formatting issues coming up with, with the system. So, but I think we can understand the words. So these are the need of corporate governance. One is transparency. The, the board members has to be transparent with the organization, with the society of what they are planning for the company's perspective and what they are dealing into. As you rightly said that, you know, there's a 2% of, of, of uh, market which has been, uh, you know, it's been always been recommendable for every company to make their CSR policies, CSR, you know, uh, activities to run around and don't do it. So this is where they fall. So then they, they, they're just trying to be transparent, but they're not. So this is a lack in governance policy. Accountability, trusteeship, control and ethics. So these are very important integrals which is important from a company perspective to follow. And that's what we are targeting to do, you know, to change the world now. Few of the challenges that what we are coming across is rapid changes in information technology. IT. So I'm sure, you know, uh, we have, we should have one of the lines as information technology uh, in this institute as well. And a lot of students are learning what is IT. So we know that there's, there's a new, new policy coming up, new technologies coming up day by day. So it's important for all the corporates to understand the upbringing and what we are here and how we have to equip ourselves with the coming upcoming technology to meet the future, future certainties. Dominant shareholder, interference of government and the others, too much social orientation and human resource challenges. So these are the factorizations that we need to take care of because unless and until we, we fall into one of the categories, we might not be able to follow the governance that we are planning to do for a company. Streamlining the corporate governance. So we were talking about how we can bring the solutions um, to the nation. I have listed down few of the few of the pointers where our, our constitution is trying to work hard and what they are planning to do now. So one of the important factorization is appointment of new auditors after every five years. So I'm from a consulting background. I know that you know every company like Pepsi, Coke, they have to switch their auditors every five years. Do you know why? What is the reason? 
there is a tendency that we get equipped with a company what their, their parameters what they are trying to make what they are trying to reflect we understand as a consultant now what happens what has happened with, with Satyam what has happened with different corporates who are falling into that categories they have a mutual understanding the consultants understand what the company wants and in a vice versa we do what they want we are we are following our ethics because what we get is what we reflect in the in the audit reports. But why this shift? Because after five years, when the new consultant joined the organization as a, as, as the, the new auditors, they don't follow the earlier pattern. They they try to bring out something new, uh, so that you know the whatever the old practices were running, we, whether it was right or it was wrong. So if 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 it was right, we try to make it more better. But it was if it was wrong. We try to improvise. This is the idea. This is another one of the steps why, why we are doing it, you know, to, to make this, this governance more streamlined. Another important factor, better process for appointments of independent directors. So we have, you know, we have so, so much of senior members uh, sitting, you know, uh, coming across from different companies, uh, from manufacturing industry and from different sectors. They all understand what is the need, what is the need of, of you know, uh, appointing new directors, bringing the new, new minds into the panel into the member session. So this is one of the ideas of, of you know, the new developments. The bill has proposed that corporates should spend certain percentage towards the CSR activities. That's, that's the right point where we, where we targeted at 2%. This is a suggestible, but none of the, none of our government, uh, you know, they make it a mandatory that you have to do it. This is the companies that you have to understand that what is the need towards a society. So if we are making profits, this is not just the profits what we are doing for ourselves for the one person who is owning the company. It is, it is the people who are helping us to, to come at a level and now it's our time to devote something towards the society. Board training programs and subcommittee of board to become more active. So you know, this, there are a lot of members who are coming across from the, from the companies, member list, from subcommittees, they are promoted. The, now the board of, board of directors, you know, when they have board meetings, they encourage the team members to come up with some new innovative ideas wherein they can punch in and they can incorporate some new ideas which can streamline the system in a more specified way. What you individually believe. Usually what happens is if, if there's a panel member of 10 people, they 10 minds. But just take an example. If we are 100 in number, if there are 100 of innovative ideas which is floating through, we have multiple ideas to think across. At least when we have ideas, we can cross by or maybe we can take it forward. That's what we do in our KPMG. We, we, we have a culture to, to, bring in, to, to bring the more innovative ideas, not just from the senior level, but from the junior most level. Because the junior most people like you, you know, now when we, you enter the corporate areas, your mind are more robust. You can bring much more, uh, you know, uh, suggestions which people from uh, different industries, they might not bring in. I'm not saying that they are, they're the experts. They have seen the industries growing and they have 30, 40 years of experience. They have. But you are the young budding talents. You have more potential according to your age now. You can, that's the reason why, why you know, we want to streamline the system. Next. Let's get back to corporate social responsibilities. Very, very important and very integral part of our society, what we do here. So one of the organizations that they define CSR as it's a business commitment to contribute to sustainable economic development, working with employees, their families, their local communities, and social and society at large to improvise their quality of life. Yes, it's a fact. We want, we all want to improvise the quality of life of each and every individual of each country. This is the sole idea. This is the idea of what we project before the year starts. We follow or we don't follow. That's a different case. Now, my understanding, what I believe about CSR is, every company harms the environment. Because when we, when I, so, okay, so I, I'll take my example. If I start my organization today, I will start with a good motive that, you know, I'm here, I will earn money, but I will also circulate money to the society. I will do something good if I, as soon as I grow with the, with, the, with the industry. But at a later time, my mind changes. My mind says that let's, let me make money first. 
and then I'll do something for the society. Slowly and gradually what happens, the year passes, I keep manipulating the money, I keep generating, I just keep making my pockets more heavy, but I fail the sole responsibility towards the society. This is where we lie. So I always say, we do, we are so responsible for, for creating a bad environment. So, you know, we can understand that or maybe this is corrected by two ways. Reducing the negative effects of the city and bringing the positivity towards a, towards a contribution if we can make. These, if we bring, if we can remove the negativity, our minds are negative. If we can bring a change, we can change the world. We can change the economy level. But if we have the same tendency of what we've been having from past 100 years and now what we have to continue, we can't do anything. This is, this is what we have to learn. This is what is expected from the young budding talents. You are the future leaders. We are the future leaders. We have to take this country to a new level. Unless and until we don't receive something different from what we've been doing so far, we will keep, we will keep dreaming of what is going now. We will still say why we have to pay money to get our children admitted to a good school. We will still say why we are, we are buying this product which is so expensive whether we can, we can buy the same product, it's a simple cost. So these are the things. Few definitions, few elements of CSR. Responsibilities means what is required and what is expected from the society, from all of us, from the organizations. Economic, the, the society and the government says, be profitable, make the profit. We have no issues. You are in India, take our India to the next level. Why we, because we are developing, we have to do it. But if you are profitable, maximize your profit, reduce the cost and then contribute towards the society. If you talk about from legal perspective, we should obey laws and regulations. Ethical, we have to be ethical in our approach. And lastly, discretion, be a good citizen. Unless and until we are a good citizen, we can't change the world. We can't change the society. From an advertising perspective, recently I came across with the, with the internet server wherein it has, it has taken a survey from 15,000 people and they're stating why it is important and why, what, what exactly rates, uh, you know, uh, what is the importance of CSR for the companies. So this is, if you, could, if you maintain a good activities, if you do something good for society, first, we can become a best place to work. Second, we can become the best admirable companies for the future companies to come in. And third, it is the only thing which can make it as a best company or the worst company. So these are important integral parts. Now, now just, just to conclude my presentation, a um, few of the things which we all should do in our regular activities. I, I have list down some of the pointers here wherein you know we do something very, very often in each day towards a society. How? Medical support to the people who need it. So, produce some 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 posters, produce some some you know charitable hospitals. We have a lot of medicines which goes waste in our home. We don't even care whether it's it's reaching to expiry or not. If it's reach expiry, we just throw it off. But we know that if you are so responsible to the society, contribute that that medicines to the PO people who can't buy it. Allow them to buy some discounted medicines from the stores. You know, we, we are staying in a society, so we have a lot of parks, we have a lot of good parts, needs to be taken care of. Why we go and we make them dirty? It's we all who make it. So, make them clean. If it's not clean, report it to the, to the RTI. Report it to the senior level, where action, actions can be taken and things can be, can be better. Not for, not for us, but for the society. This is again one of the social responsibility that we can take care of. Food and clothes. We, we wear a lot of clothes, you know, we, we just throw it off because when we are earning, we have so much of money, ample money that we can buy clothes, we keep on switching. What, how about our old clothes? They're not, they're not, they're not wasted. We should give them to the people who can actually, you know, make use of it. This is important that we all can do it towards the society and we should do it. Fourth is mistakes. Go for the tree plantation drive because we KBMG, we have the culture of driving, you know, these type of activities. We go for tree plantation in different, um, you know, different um, uh, parks. We go to different, you know, uh, urban rural areas where we can be, we go for the saplings and it's, it's eventually for the people who are poor, for the society. We can bring the greenery towards the, the society. Mobile crutches, 
Paint a, go, go and paint a slum houses because we usually see that when we are traversing past the slum area, it's too dirty. So if you have that soft corner in your heart, go and paint their houses. Trust me, that one feeling can give you, can bring a smile to your face and can bring a smile to the person to whom you're helping with. So in the end, I would simply say, few of the factors that we can certainly take into mind. First, be a good citizen. If you're a good citizen, you can do justified, you can be justified to your life, you can justify it to the society, and then you can become a good future, part, future partner for the organization. Second, bring a smile on your face. If we keep cribbing, we cannot succeed in our life. Third, be a responsible person for the society, because unless and until we don't think about society, we can't leave our way. Thank you so much. Thank you. The panel discussion and the presentation brought together the collective intelligentsia of leading corporate houses. It was a very useful and an interactive session. We thank all the panelists for their valuable inputs. Now, I would like to request Dr. Sangeeta Rahul to felicitate Mr. C.K. Thakur with a memento as a token of appreciation. Thank you, ma'am. I would also request Mr. Vivek Kuchal to present the memento to Dr. S.K. Gupta as a token of gratitude. Thank you, sir. I would now request Dr. Manju Gupta to present a memento to Mr. Rajiv Bajaj as a token of appreciation. Thank you, ma'am. I request Dr. Lokesh Jindal to kindly felicitate Dr. Meenu Gupta with a token of appreciation. Thank you, sir. I would now like to request Dr. V.K. Khurana to please present a memento to Mr. Ankit Mathur as a token of appreciation. Thank you, sir. Lastly, I request Anju Bharti, ma'am, to present a memento to Simran Mathur as a token of gratitude. centralized to the study, research draws its power from the fact that it is empirical rather than theorizing about what might be effective or what could work. I would now like to welcome Mr. S.K. Urmalia, who has been the former director at Power Finance Corporation Corporate Office. We welcome you, sir. We also have with us Dr. V.K. Khurana, who is a professor at Maharaja Agrasen Institute of Management Studies. Sir is an expert in his area and has written many research papers and book on management technology, innovation and change. Sir, we welcome you. I would now like to invite Dr. Ravindra Jeet, ma'am, to felicitate Ms. Dr. S.K. Urmalia, sir, with a floral welcome. We welcome you, sir. Now, I request Dr. Urvashi Sharma, ma'am, to present a floral welcome to Dr. V.K. Khurana, sir. We welcome you, sir. Now I request Dr. V.K. Khurana, sir, to take over the session. Okay. So we are going to start this session. As we are behind, behind schedule, so I will request every speaker to restrict uh, to a maximum period of five minutes each. So, can we have uh, Dr. Suman and Mr. Sachin Aunty here? And today I am going to present on the topic corporate social responsibility and bottom line ethically and contribute to economic development <laughs> while improving the quality of life of the workforce and their families as well of the local community and society at large. Basically, this is the meaning of corporate social responsibility. Now, why we have corporate social responsibility? Uh, participation of corporate houses for social development has become necessity in the light of national income contribution by 
corporate houses. The agriculture sector contributes in national GDP merely 13.9%. That means remaining part uh, covered by uh, manufacturing and in manufacturing industries and the service sector. Uh, it represents poor productivity of labor, which leads to poor profitability uh, and. Uh, and hence, lesser income to the people involved in these sectors, which in turn lead to vicious circle of poverty. The circle may be broken by intervention of co uh, corporate, social, uh, sorry, corporate houses through the newly emerged law under the Companies Act 2013 and the advent of the uh, CSR. So that means corporate must uh, shoulder the responsibility of social development and the better human life with healthy living standard. Uh, now, I would like to uh, highlight the historical view of the CSR that covered in a different phases. First phase, in the first phase, charity and philanthropy were the main drivers of CSR. Wealthy merchants shared a part of their wealth with the wider society by way of setting up temples for a religious cause and also provided food from their godowns and money and thus securing an integral position in the society. The industri industrial families of the 19th century, such as Tata, Godrej, Bajaj, Modi, Birla, Singhania, were strongly inclined towards economic as well as social consideration. And the second phase, in the second phase, uh, during the independence movement, there was increased stress on the Indian industrialists to demonstrate the dedicated dedication towards the progress of the society. This was when Mahatma Gandhi introduced the notion of trusteeship, according to which the industry leaders had to manage their wealth so as to benefit the common man. Under his influence, the businessman established trust for schools and colleges and also helped in setting up training and scientific institution. And the next phase that lies in the year 1960 to 80, had its relation to the element of mixed economy. The public sector was seen as the prime movers of development because of the stringent legal rules and regulation surrounding the activities of private sector. The period was described as an era of command and control. The policy of industrial licensing, high taxes, high, te high taxes and restriction on the private sectors led to corporate malpractices. This lead to enactment of legislations regarding corporate governance, labor and environmental issues. PSUs were set up by the state to ensure suitable distribution of resources, wealth, food, etc. to the needy. In the last phase, that uh, after the 1980 uh, till present, the Indian companies started abandoning their traditional engagement with CSR and integrated it into a sustainable uh, uh, sustainable business strategy, uh, strategy increased growth momentum of the economy helped Indian companies growing rapidly and this this made them more willing Indian companies which export and reduce goods for the de developed world need to pay a close attention to compliance with the international standard. Now the court uh, corporate responsibility towards the society. By an estimate out of 13.3 lakhs companies registered, 2,600 actively traded, about 8,000 companies less than 1% across sectors will be covered by the CSR provisions. Government is expecting a fund flow of about rupees 10,000 crore a year from corporate for social welfare initiative. Funds would be spent in social sectors such as education, health and public welfare rather than individual philanthropy. CSR in current scenario. India has provided CSR in its statute and section 135 in the Companies Act 2013 on CSR has been notified effective from April 1st, 2014. Following companies will be covered under this net worth of rupees 500 crore or more about 90 million dollar turnover of rupees 1000 crore or more about 180 million and the net profit of indian rupees uh, 5 uh, 5 crore rupees or more csr spending 
CSR spending, the board of every company shall ensure that the company spends in every financial year at least 2% of the net average net profit of the companies made during the three immediately preceding financial in pursuance of its CSR policy. And what are the CSR activities? With the advent of this law, that means uh, Companies Act 19, uh, sorry, 2013, a, a more comprehensive method for development of CSR program has been adopted by some corporates such as Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, Maruti Suzuki India Limited, and JK Organization, etc., by making following provisions improve medical and sanitation facilities, building schools, houses, empowering villages, self reliance by providing vocational training and a knowledge of business operations, etc. Impact of CSR on three bottom lines. Uh, my, my uh, uh, sorry, my uh, title is CSR and its bottom line. Now I will focus on the uh, bottom lines. The corporate social responsibility, if performed with full dedication. Honorable dignitaries, respected faculty, and my dear friends, good afternoon to one and all. Today, myself Parikya Gupta and Garima Ghor were here to present a paper on corporate social responsibility, a comparative view. The paper objective is to present a comparative view of the corporate social responsibility of service sector IT companies in India with the help of four selected companies, which are Infosys Limited, Wipro Limited, HCL Technologies Limited, and Tata Consultancy Services showcasing a comparative view of their CSR. It briefly outlines the comparison between the objectives or CSR activities which have been operated by various companies in all ethical ways for the society. In, in the year 2014, a mandatory CSR provision came into the effect in the Companies Act 2013. The Act made it mandatory for all the companies to contribute 2% of their net profit on CSR and also it encouraged them to meet certain thresholds. According to CSR Wire, India's top companies for CSR 2014 in the service sector were Infosys Limited, Wipro, Pati Airtel, HCL Technologies and Tata Consultancy Services. The CSR activities of companies are as follows. First, we go to Tata Consultancy Services. Uh, Tata Consultancy Services is India's largest software company. The core areas for TCS CSR program are education, health, environment. It has also won the Asian CSR award for initiating community development work and implementing various programs and devoting leadership and sincerity as ongoing commitment in incorporating ethical values. TCS embodies the Tata Group's philosophy of building sustainable business that are firmly rooted in the community and demonstrate care for the environment. Towards this, TCS has adopted the triple bottom line approach and recognizes people, planet and profit as central pillars of the corporate sustainability. TCS is working upon environment policy and has been developing environment friendly products and services. It has also taken some footprints into the health sector too. It's actively supporting children's medicines, industrial work area hygiene and safety. The latest CSR initiative by TCS is the contribution for government Swachh Bharat campaign. TCS announced to finance hygiene sanitation facilities for girl students across 10,000 schools in the country and also spend Rs 100 crore for this initiative. Now we come to Infosys Limited. Infosys Limited expanded its CSR activities with Infosys Foundation created in 1996. The focused areas are learning and education, art and healthcare, and social rehabilitation and upliftment. Under learning and education, My School initiative has been taken, which helps in providing basic amenities to the children in school. In art and healthcare, it established health safety and environment management system. Under rehabilitation and upliftment, Infosys reconstructed 14 government schools, hostels, orphanages, and old age homes. The sustainability at Infosys is upholded on three pillars. Resource intensity means responsible consumption and conservation of resources. Green innovation, making environment-centric products and services. And social contract, that is understanding community and employees and its role in industry. Third company is Wipro Limited. The initiative of Wipro is towards education, society, workplace and environment. However, it focuses majorly on education and environment. 
Wipro Care is an initiative by Wiproites and contributes via two prolonged strategy, learning enhancement and disaster rehabilitation. Wipro also aims at enhancing employability of engineering graduates by empowering faculty via its mission 10x. HCL Technologies is a leading IT service company. Under HCL Technology, it focuses majorly on three activities which are environment, education and upliftment of society. Under environment, it launched GoGreen initiative where it disposed 13,000 assets under e-waste. In education, it runs HCL Gurukuls, the education and skill department centers for youth located in slums and suburbs. For upliftment of the society, the HCL Technologies Foundation was founded. From the timeline of HCL Technology Sustainable Report, we can see how it benefited the society. We have the CSR areas of companies in a comparative view that we already discussed. Uh, concluding this presentation, from the comparison, it has been noted that the corporate social responsibility has gained prominence from all the venues. Corporations have realized the importance of being associated with socially relevant causes for promoting brands. Also, companies have started using CSR as a strategy which aims at mutual development of the company and community. Companies use CSR to integrate the economic, environmental and social objectives with the operations and growth of company. CSR activities have had a major impact on the society and have contributed in its upliftment. Thank you. Thank you. One of the speakers said in the morning that uh, CSR initiatives or values and ethics, they have to be started from the beginning stage itself. So it is very good that our students, they are also coming forward. So it was indeed a good presentation. Thank you, sir. As far as this routine CSR activities is concerned, presentation is excellent. Nowadays, another thing is getting prominence. In our country, a lot of natural calamities are happening, like four years back in Leh, then this uh, 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 last year in Kashmir. So the rehabilitation activities out of those calamities are also taken up through CSR uh, uh, allocated funds. So when you make this presentation next time, I think you can look into this aspect also. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Paragya and Garima, for your valuable insights. Now, may I request Ms. Dr. Namita Rajput Bharti, Associate Professor in Commerce, Sri Aurobindo College, USMS, and Sherry O'Broy, Associate Professor, University of Delhi, to present their paper on the topic, Do Social Responsibility, Governance, Practices Impact Corporate Performances? A very good afternoon everyone. The topic of my presentation is Do Social Responsibility and Governance Practices Impact? Do Social Responsibility and Governance Practices Impact Corporate Financial Performance and Analytical Study? So as we all know that due to globalization, liberalization and privatization, there has been an integration of the financial market of Indian economy with the rest of the world. So in order to do the business in an ethical way, it has become mandatory to set up the laws to follow the code of conduct and business ethics it has become very important so to uh, for the long run growth and sustainability this ethical and the good governance practices is very important nowadays so as far as csr is concerned csr is basically how a business corporate or a company they can uh, be in some so behave in a social responsibility manner so it has become it has been become mandatory after the Companies Act 2013 now, the clause 135 deals with the CSR and all those companies, it, it, this uh, section uh, 135 basically encourages all the companies to spend at least 2% of the average profit of the three preceding years on the CSR activities. The main objectives of the study are to study the impact of corporate governance practices on the firm performance, to investigate the relationship between CSR expenditure and the corporate financial performance in terms of its impact on the net profit and the sales revenue, to analyze if the investment in CSR activities lead to long-term stability and sustainability in the company. So these were the hypotheses which were formed, which were formulated 
First is there is no significant relationship of, between the corporate governance index and the firm performance. Second is there is no significant relationship between CSR expenditure in the current year and profits in the following year. Third is there is no significant relationship between profits in the current year and the CSR in the next year. Fourth is the, there is no significant relationship between CSR in the current year and the sales revenue in the succeeding year. Last was there is no significant relationship between sales revenue of the current year and the sale CSR of the next year. So in order to collect the data we have taken uh, almost approximately total of the 76 companies and which we have taken from the BSC 100 and the data has been collected from 2007 to 2014 from the ProVis and for analyzing the CSR and the financial performance, the relationship between two, we have taken approximately 500 Indian companies and the financial year which we have taken is 2012, 13 and 13 and 14 and to analyze the data we have used the ordinary least square regression method and the correlation techniques on the data. So these, this is the this is the equation which we have followed. We have taken different dependent variables and the independent variables. And this is the uh, relationship between the CSR and the financial performance. We have taken this regression equation. These are the results of our uh, results of the data which we have analyzed. So this is a result because of the paucity of time. I'm just going through all these slides like this. So the results show that. Uh, analysis of the results show that the corporate governance index has a significantly negative impact on the ROE. ROE is negatively correlated to CGI, although the relationship is insignificant at the 5 percent level. CAG, CGI is negatively related to financial performance of the firm as measured by the Tobin skew. And there is also a moderate level of positive correlation between CSR, sales and the profit. As the p-value is less than 0 0.05, the results are significant. And it also reject the hypothesis. 2, 3, 4 and 5 and we to conclude that the increase in the profit in the past year will lead to higher CSR expenditure in the following year. So these are the implication, implications of the study. So it means that sound functioning of the corporate governance is very crucial for both the local companies as well as the foreign investors and the CSR activity, CSR should not be considered as an expenditure, it should be taken as an investment that is the deferred expenditure the benefits of which will be uh, reaped in the coming futures then in order the company should also be sensitive towards environment in the society to getting the benefits of mitigating financial risk so corporate should establish a designated legal entity to analyze the social impact factor of the investment decision that a company is take thank you so much one thing i wanted to share uh, doctor Namita Raipur. Okay, you have Shelly. So, I find that your team is regularly participating and contributing a lot of research papers. So, congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, sir something you would like to say? Yeah. Say any suggestions regarding this? Yeah. I want to know. This is indeed a very nice presentation because efforts have been uh, have been made to correlate various uh, financial indicators with this CSR. Uh, only concern is that the foreign companies which are having their subsidiaries in our country, their uh, extent of operation is very, very less as compared to the main company. Good afternoon, everyone present over here. My name is Bhavya Malhotra and I'm from Sri Aurobindo College, University of Delhi. Uh, my topic is uh, angling sustainability, stakeholder expectations and insights on the CSR mandate under the Companies Act 2K13. Now, as we all know, corporate social responsibility is voluntary activities that are taken up by the company in an economic, social and environmentally sustainable manner. And companies are the ones that, who actually get the resources from the, uh, from the uh, society. So therefore, it is uh, the need of the other that they contribute to uh, back towards the society. So the CSR projects for basically focus on uh, social problems such as poverty, elevation, reduction in inequality, etc. Now in some companies, CSR is initiated by the top management, while in the others, uh, it is initiated by the individuals who are associated uh, with the certain NGOs or uh, like that. Now the, now the objectives of the study are to find out the level of awareness about CSR related requirements of the new companies at 2013. Next is to understand the need of systems and processes in board and stakeholders for spending and implementation of the CSR policy. The next objective 
is uh, to understand the requirement of the reviewing and monitoring of uh, the CSR activities in a particular span of time. Next is to know how important it is to measure the impact of CSR activities through measurement tools uh, such as social return on investment. Next is to understand the perception regarding CSR related active areas of the companies. And the last but not the least is to understand how to make CSR related activities more cost uh, effective that is maximizing the benefits and minimizing the cost. Next, uh, we come up to the data and methodology uh, section. Primary data has been collected uh, using a structured questionnaire which was sent through email to 100 respondents uh, to get a free 100 people from various sectors to get a holistic and a wholesome view about the same. Next was the responses from 80 respondents was received. The next section relates to the analysis and the interpretation part. Uh, the, uh, there were certain questions which were asked uh, through the, uh, to the participants in the questionnaire. The first was uh, the level of awareness about CSR related requirements. It means that if the board members, it is important, is it important that the board members of the organization should have a full and updated knowledge about the CSR related requirements and we were able to get a positive uh, response in this uh, regard. Next was uh, if there was a need of systems and processes for effective implementation of the CSR policy and majority of the participants strongly agreed to the fact that it was the need of the hour that the systems and processes for uh, implementation of the CSR policy needs to be there. Now if we look at the history of the CSR in our country, it was regarded as the charity and philanthropy as our culture, religion, family values and tradition, industrialization had an influential effect on CSR. Now for example, as the saying in Sanskrit goes, Atiti Devo Bhava, which means the one who comes to you for being served should be taken as to be as God, is considered as the highest order of responsibility, be it to individuals or to the society. This phrase itself is the indicator of acceptance of CSR in the culture of Indian society. Now I will be concentrating more on the, uh, the CSR initiatives taken by the companies. Now let us take example first for the Hindustan Unilever Limited. The company is enhancing the vocation skills for women in rural areas and they are empowering them. They recruit, train the Shakti entrepreneurs and their employment have increased from 45,000 in 2010 to 75,000 in 2015. Now another initiative taken by the HUL is that a challenge to change the hygiene behavior of 100 million people in India through hand washing behavior change program promoting preventive health care and sanitation which will reduce the incidence of life threatening diseases like diarrhea, pneumonia, etc. which claims lives of over 6 lakh children in India. Now the next we have the initiatives taken by the ITC company which is very important. Each of all now it is an Indian based business initiatives by the ITC Limited that provides internet access to rural farmers. The purpose is to inform and empower them as a result to improve the quality of agricultural goods and also the quality of life of farmers. ITC has created more than 6500 each of all computer stations in rural areas that serve an average of 600 farmers each Using this technology, farmers may order supplies, learn about best agricultural practices, receive weather reports and read about pricing for crops throughout the region. Next we are taking for the ONGC. It has embarked on a project called ONGC Project Saraswati to provide water in drought prone areas of India. For example, the villagers could not believe their eyes when clear water gushed out from a pump in the Thar Desert, which is six kilometers far from Jaisalmer in Rajasthan, where 76,000 liters of water got released in an hour during pumping test. The last is the PNG. Under PNG flagship, CSR program Siksha is an integral part of the global philanthropy program 
which says live, learn and thrive. Now it's eighth year, Siksha has still date held 280,000 underprivileged children access to their right to education. So I would say at the end, CSR should not be seen only as a compulsion but should be undertaken for creating measurable value for the society. Thank you all. Madam uh, Anju Bharti is a very keen researcher and she keeps on writing lots of research papers also. She has shared with us new examples of CSR initiatives like, uh, undertaken by companies like HUL, IITC, etc. Any suggestion? Uh, often the question is asked whether these CSR activities are uh, having any impact on the business of any corporation. But when you do certain things for the society, you get proper publicity and then more shareholders come into your company, you get more money and then your business grows further. So that is the impact of the CSR, it's always positive impact. So every company should make efforts uh, uh, doing good things for the society and pop, uh, they should be able to publicize it properly also. Thank you. Good afternoon everybody, I'm Jyotsa from Maitri College and my topic is on CSR. It's uh, social responsibility in India. It's monitoring in the age of globalization. I just give the definition of globalization. It's changing in the society and the world economy. Increase of trade and investing. Profit maximization organization. Operation in a socially responsible manner. Opportunities to MNCs and TNCs to expand all over the world. Question arises how the corporate world takes on social responsibility. Basically, how the globally we are looking at the social responsibility. As I just give the definition of CSR, everyone uh, give the definition. It's uh, to use the resources in a way to uh, benefit a society, participation as a member of society, improving welfare of society independently. The next is objective. Basically, these are the objectives. The first is to assess and the analyze, understand what happened on corporate social responsibility when a multinational companies operate culture border of US and India. I just taken one of the countries, US, to compare India also. The next is to explain whether the US and India justify their culture based on different corporate social responsibility challenges. The next is to assess whether MNCs implement uh, that corporate social responsibility on host uh, countries. The next is to find out how much benefits get by the city, uh, situation of the host countries and the deprived session of the globalization benefits when corporate social responsibility activities are undertaken by multinational companies. And the last to understand the economic, legal, ethical and discretionary expectation that society has from corporate world at a break in a time. The next is, I just give the what is the uh, difference is globalization and CSR. The next is literature review. Some of the eminent people, they just give their views regarding the CSR. Uh, I just give one of the comparison, what are the law in India and what are the U US doing for the CSR. There is no such law in uh, this US, but we have uh, this act 2013 uh, uh, related to the CSR where we have to, the companies have to spend 2%. Good afternoon everyone, today we, Shelly and Revati Naya, both going to present our paper on green marketing as a tool of corporate social responsibility. <laughs> corporate social responsibility is the commitment by business to behave ethically and contribute to economic development while improving the quality of life of the society. Why companies are taking this initiative in CSR? In this modern era, the, con the expectation of the society in Craze toward business world. They want their business companies to act as an equal social responsible member in their social community. 
to overcome these expectations of the society, the society have given birth to a new concept, green marketing. Green marketing as a tool of CSR. The objective of our study or research are to understand how companies are using green marketing as a tool of CSR, to understand the future and challenges which are faced in the green marketing. We will also study about various green marketing initiatives through example of corporate worlds. Now, what is green marketing? Green marketing is the development and marketing of a product designed in a manner that is sensitive or responsive to ecological concern. It incorporates a broad range of activities including product modification, changes to the production process, packaging changes as well as modifying ad advertising. Now, benefits of green marketing are it helps in internal benefits are it helps to boost sales, it reduces the operating and production cost of a company and it also attracts potential employees. The external benefits include it generate public relations, create brand preference and loyalty plus it also helps it to qualify a business. If we speak about challenges of green marketing then it will be need for standardization there is no standardization to authenticate that green marketing done by companies are 100% relevant. It's a new concept, plus the companies should patiently wait for the result of green marketing act as it is a long-term investment. And it also helps the company to avoid green myopia. Let's talk about the initiatives taken by the corporate world. The first example we are taking is of Apple. Apple is recycling all of their products. Being a green marketer, the Apple is using aircraft grade aluminium stainless steel and high grade plastics that are high in demand from the recyclers. All the Apple retail stores take all back the unwanted iPods for the environmental friendly disposal. Now, being a retailer company, Patagonia is an outdoor apparel company which asks the consumer to consider the environment impact of their purchases. Rather than encouraging the people to buy the new stuff, they encourage the people to extend life of their old items by repairing them rather than buying the new. If we take the example of electronics company, Royal Philips Electronics take the initiative by launching the EcoVision for program. Philips is focusing on improving the energy efficiency of its product and operation. Now, taking an example of beverage company, Coca-Cola in 2010 Winter's Olympics, visitors of Coke Cafe Lounge can sit and relax in pine beetle wood furniture. They can drink from bottles made from plastic-based materials. All the staff uniforms were made of recycled bottles. Now, taking an example of uh, automobile industry, then Ford. Uh, Ford has started an innovative program called My Energy Lifestyle, a technology that helps people to use energy more efficiently. Now, about LG as an example, LG's green marketing activity is reduction of greenhouse gas emissions throughout the entire product life cycle. Now, take, talking about any current green marketing initiative of company, it is, uh, we have an example of AIMS with us. It is, give, uh, it is going to build a data center to maximize energy saving through optimal operation and utility for facilities. It will be undertaken by Hitachi India. The Sang student of Maharaja Agrisen Institute of Technology. Our topic of research is sustainability of corporate social responsibility in India, a study of ITC's initiative eJapan. So in this two-day seminar, we uh, come across the fact that uh, corporate responsibility has gained importance since 1990. Uh, it aimed at balancing economic growth with environmental sustainability and social cohesion and has motivated the following three intellect business movements, corporate social responsibility, corporate sustainability, worldwide reforms on corporate governance. <coughs> 
CSR rating and its impact on investors, there are majorly four types of socially responsible investor. Number one, first type of investors who uh, basically uh, depend upon, uh, focus on the financial performance of the company and they believe that if the company is ethically responsible, they are going to earn profits in the long run. Second type of investors who are logical in nature and they believe that a socially and ethically responsible company which abide by its duty and ethics uh, earn clean profits in past and in future activities. Consecutional investors aim uh, to be the socially aware investors and they do not invest in those companies who are misbehaving uh, in the economy. Expressive investors are those investors who, uh, sorry, expressive investors are those investors who believe that uh, investing in the company who are C, uh, who involve in CSR activities uh, gave them an association to be a socially responsible investors. Status of CSR in India, there are a lot of activities undertaken by various companies in India. Uh, naming a few, Dabur India Limited commenced Sundesh in 1993, a NPO which aimed to promote research and welfare activities in rural areas. Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited has adopted 37 villages as their responsibility to develop in all walk of life. Tata Group has created towns and cities like Jamshedpur for the benefits of its employees. Cadbury India, Glaxo and Richardson, Hindustan are some of the companies which are helping farmers to grow crops with the turn shall serve as raw materials to them. And last and not the least, the topic for our research, ITC's Ichopal. A brief, in this uh, paper we have uh, incorporated a case study approach to understand the practices adopted by ITC uh, as the Ichopal initiative. ITC and introduction, ITC is one of India's foremost private sector company. It has a diverse portfolio in FMGC, paperwork, hotel and in agribusiness. It was confirmed the II AIM Asia CSR Award by the Asian Forum on Corporate Social Responsibility in recognition for its meaningful contribution to the creation of sustainable livelihood and fostering economic growth in rural communities in India. The business model of each of all, it was launched in June 2000. Basically, uh, it, the computers are uh, connected with the internet access in rural farmers. The internet access is provided via phone lines or VSAT connection. It serves an average of 600 farmers in 10 surrounding villages within 5 kilometer radius. Each Ichopal costs from 3,000 to 6,000 US dollars and have a 100 dollar US dollar maintenance each year. Using the system does not cost anything to the farmer, but there uh, is a person, the host farmer, named as Sanchalak, who, who occurs a nominal trans operation cost and is obliged by the public oath to serve the entire community. Each of our model helps to access daily closing price on local Mondays to track global price trends, finding information about new farming techniques, ground conditions, improving planning, to order seeds, fertilizer, and other consumer goods. It benefits farmers for more accurate weighing, faster processing time, and prompt payment, and from access to a wide range of information. Farmers, through each of our medium, sell directly to ITC, and they receive approximately 2.5% higher prices. And on the same hand, ITC gets a reduced cost of 2.5% by saving its commission fee and transportation cost. So it is a win-win situation on both sides. This is the present start of uh, Ichopal. It covers 10 states, 40,000 villages, 6,500 Ichopals have been set up across India and approximately 4 million farmers are covered under this scheme. Very good afternoon one and all. Our research work is all about corporate governance practices and increasing NPAs with special reference to public sector banks. NPA is a loan or advance where interest or installment of principal remain overdue for a period of more than 90 days in respect of a term loan or an account which remain out, out of order in overdraft or an asset which ceases to generate income. 
NPAs can be classified as substandard assets, doubtful assets and loss assets. NPAs are a result of various internal and external factors. Any changes in the legal and political environment of a nation greatly affect asset quality of bank. Now talking about some latest news on NPAs, we found that rising NPAs has become a trigger for well-established banks, especially public sector banks. Recently, Central Bank of India has been set to top the list of public sector banks with maximum bad loans, including reconstructed assets as a percentage of total advances. Also, according to RBI, Central Bank of India's 21.5% assets are either bad or have been reconstructed to save them to turning into NPA. Also, we found that United Bank has 19.04%, Punjab and Sindh Bank has 18.25%, while PNB has 17.85% of bad loans as on December 2014. Additionally, we would be surprised to know that some of the big established banks of India like Indian Overseas Bank, State Bank of Patiala, Allahabad Bank, etc. all had bad loans in excess of 15%. That is a very big amount. The top 30 defaulters are sitting on bad loans of Rs 95,122 crores, which is more than one third of the gross NPAs of PSUs. The condition of banks seem to deteriorate continuously as when we know that Dena Bank, which did not receive good response for its NPAs last fiscal year, is now planning to auction it at a lower price. The bank had put an auction of about 400 to 500 crores of stressed assets in the last year and these are being sold only 30 crores of loans out of them. NP is a double-edged weapon. On one hand, it does not guarantee income for bank, and on the other hand, banks are required to make provisions out of current profit. NP not only affects current profit, but also future streams of income. NP is a repercussions of the economy. When loans are not repaid, much of the funds go out of business, and cycle of lending, repaying, and borrowing is broken, which causes a slowdown in GDP growth and industrial output, a fall in profit and margins of the corporate, which reluctantly lead to depression of the market. High level of NPAs in bank reduce interest income causing stress and profitability, lending erosions and capital resources and increased difficulty in augmenting capital resources. NPAs generate a vicious cycle of effects on the sustainability and growth of banking system and if not managed properly could even lead to bank failure. Now we would like to look upon the trend analysis of NPAs towards a bracket of 1999 till 2013. <coughs> Public sector banks dominate the banking sector of India. Indian banking system continued to be dominated by public sector banks even after the strong wave of globalization, liberalization and privatization. From year 1999 to 2002, gross NPAs were increasing. In year 2002, the total gross NPAs in public sector banks were Rs 564.73 billion, that is 11.1% of gross advances and 4.9% of total assets. Thereafter, the gross NPAs have shown a decreasing trend and reached to a level of Rs 389.68 billion crores at the end of March 2007. But this trend reversed after 2008 when NPA rose significantly.